Can a heat pump really melt a metal? A definite no will be the answer from most of you. But what if I tell you that a new heat pump offers such a high temperature on the hot side that can literally melt metals like zinc? It could be hard to believe as when we think of heat pumps, we usually imagine them keeping us warm during icy winters, right? The idea that a heat pump can reach up to 550 degrees Celsius might be unbelievable, but it's taking shape. How this tech is made possible? Let's see in this video. I'm Abhishek and welcome to Revolutionary Engineering. In one of my previous videos, I had covered technologies that use super low cost materials like bricks and graphite blocks to store thermal energy at very high temperatures for use in industries. But here, the heat is being stored in the material through resistive heating. This technology, however, is very different from the resistive heating techniques. A company called Airtheum is building probably the world's first very high temperature heat pump that can supply heat up to 550 degrees Celsius. This technology could place heat pumps in the race for industrial scale heating. The heat pumps offered by them can generate up to three times the amount of heat that a resistor generates for bricks or sand battery using the same amount of electricity. This is in line with the fact that heat pumps deliver more heat than what is actually fed into them or more technically they are defined by coefficient of performance or COP while resistive heating can convert only up to 100% of electricity into heat. The developers of this very high temperature heat pump have made a tweak in the thermodynamic cycle of the existing heat pumps that will make it three times better in terms of temperature on the hot side. To exactly understand what they have done, it's important to first recall what's happening inside an existing heat pump. A heat pump is a device that transfers heat from a source to a sink. The source is where you wish to extract heat from and is relatively at lower temperature. So it's the atmosphere or outside environment. Heat sink, on the other hand, is where you wish to deliver heat to and it is at a higher temperature. So it's the room where you want high temperature during winters. Now since you're transferring heat from a lower to a higher temperature, it will require work as heat cannot spontaneously flow from a colder location to a hotter area without the application of external work by virtue of second law of thermodynamics. The work required for this transfer is provided by an electrical energy input. This is a basic principle behind the working of a heat pump. But the existing heat pumps are placed at a spot in the market to provide heat with a low temperature difference. And this is the limitation that has put a barrier for them to enter industrial heating market. So why is this a limitation? You can understand this with an example. Suppose a heat pump has a temperature of 0 degrees Celsius on the source side it cannot deliver a temperature of more than 80 degrees on the heatsink side. So it has a temperature difference of 80 degrees, usually called as lift. Even a commercially available high temperature heat pump has a maximum heatsink temperature of 150 degrees Celsius, usually lower than that, with lift of not more than 80 degrees. But for applications requiring at least 300 degrees Celsius in industries, this is in no way achievable by any existing heat pumps especially if the temperature on the source side is quite low, like 0 degrees. If you look closely, most of the heat pumps are based on vapor compression cycle. The refrigerant enters the compressor as a low pressure and low temperature vapor, where the pressure is increased and the refrigerant leaves as a high temperature and high pressure gas. This hot pressurized gas then passes through the condenser where it releases heat to the surroundings as it cools and condenses completely. The cooler, high pressure liquid next passes through the expansion valve which reduces the pressure abruptly causing the temperature to drop dramatically. The cold low pressure mixture of liquid and vapor next travels through the evaporator where it vaporizes completely as it accepts heat from the surroundings before returning to the compressor to start the cycle again. But the problem with even the most efficient vapor compressor heat pumps is that they are not very efficient compared to the theoretical maximum defined in thermodynamics by the Carnot cycle, or rather reverse Carnot cycle, since we are dealing with heat pumps. They are about just 40% of the COP that is achievable in reverse Carnot cycle. This is because in vapor compression cycle, the gas is compressed and expanded adiabatically, meaning that there is no heat transfer during compression and expansion. Significantly more energy is required to compress a gas adiabatically than isothermally. This can be seen from a PV diagram wherein the area under the curve represents work required. The steeper curve for adiabatic process compared to isothermal indicates larger work to compress. Also, the adiabatic compression in an actual vapor compression cycle based heat pumps is not a reversible process. 
meaning it cannot be used as a heat engine when the cycle is reversed. And it is this irreversibility that manifests as energy loss, which limits the thermodynamic efficiency. Now comes the interesting part. I know it's going to be technical, but again, it will give you the real insight of the innovation that I'm about to come to in a minute. Consider a Stirling engine. Many of you might have seen the single cylinder type. Now consider a two cylinder Stirling engine as it's easy to understand the concept with this type. It runs on a heat source with four different phases, expansion, transfer of the gas, compression, and re-transfer of the gas back into the hot cylinder. But when you remove the heat source from the engine and start applying a mechanical work by manually driving the piston and flywheel, eventually it will create temperature difference on these two sides and what you have is a Stirling engine operating as a heat pump. In this, the compression and expansion of the gas are near isothermal, meaning that the heat is added and rejected while keeping the temperature constant in these processes. This gets it close to the most efficient Carnot engine or rather a reverse Carnot engine where the heat addition and rejection is during the isothermal process. But the other two processes in the Stirling heat pump, one during which the gas goes to the cold side after compression and the other during which it re-enters the hot side or the compressor after expansion are both isochoric or simply constant volume processes. The heat rejected and absorbed during these two processes makes the cycle efficiency lower than Carnot. But if they are arranged in a regenerative-like system like this one, the heat rejected during one process is absorbed in the other and the cycle efficiency becomes equal to Carnot. Now here is a catch. To keep the gas compression and expansion isothermal, they have to be kept very slow so that the gas inside the chamber can dissipate or absorb heat nearly as quickly as the chamber walls to keep its temperature constant. This makes it impractical for real-world applications. But now, few of the companies like Schuit Mechanics have managed to make compression of gas near isothermal through new heat transfer technique of closely spaced pack of fins at the bottom side of piston that dips inside the hydraulic fluid. In this system, they use helium gas due to its higher thermal conductivity. So when the gas is compressed between the hydraulic fluid and the piston, it dissipates heat to these fins and when it expands, it takes the heat back from the fins thus maintaining the constant temperature of the gas. Okay, so far we have achieved the efficiency and practicality. But what about the temperature at the heatsink side? Even the best high temperature heat pumps have not been able to achieve more than 200 degrees Celsius on the heatsink side. This has been an entry barrier for heat pumps in high temperature industrial heating market. According to Aethium, this is what they are trying to solve. Aethium seems to have cracked this code by tweaking the process from Stirling cycle based to its closer relative Ericsson cycle based. Ericsson cycle is similar to Stirling with the only difference that the two constant volume processes I mentioned few minutes back are now replaced with constant pressure processes. So how does it matter? Remember I mentioned that the volume of gas remains constant in the Stirling cycle when it leaves or enters the hot and cold side. Let's understand this taking the cold side. Since the volume is unchanged during transfer, now as the gas enters the cold side, it has to expand to fill up the equal volume cold side cylinder. During expansion, it gets cooled and now the much colder high volume gas cannot efficiently achieve fast isothermal expansion. This leads to irreversibilities and loss in efficiency. But this is not the case with Ericsson cycle. Since the pressure remains constant, the volume of the gas can change. So during transfer to the cold side, the already low volume gas enters the smaller cold side cylinder. See how gas now expands in lesser volume. This enables it to achieve what is called fast near isothermal expansion, reducing the irreversibilities in the system, making it more efficient and practical. Likewise, the fast near isothermal compression can deliver heat at temperatures up to 550 degrees Celsius through efficient heat dissipation, even when the temperature on the source side is as low as minus 70 degrees Celsius. The core technology behind achieving this fast near isothermal compression is not yet disclosed by the company, but the claim that design is simple enough without any high temperature sliding or rotating seals, making it a low maintenance machine. At first, their prototype will demonstrate this technology with the hot and cold side temperature difference of 250 degrees Celsius. They are aiming for high temperature markets, particularly industrial heating in 160 to 550 degrees Celsius heat segment. But if there is one thing that matters most for industrial heating, apart from high temperature heat, it's the cost. If you see, at present, 
the cost of resistive heating through renewable energy sources is $20 per megawatt hour thermal. Through their heat pump technology, they plan to bring it down to $7. Close to 20% of global CO2 emissions come from industrial heat alone. Entry of heat pumps in industry could have a significant impact on the emissions if done at scale.